In today's video, I'm going to review and go over how to play adventure games. Discover the story, The Dungeon. There are hobbyists among us, geniuses with the ability to play any game they want to. In 1978, a corporation known as The Interior isolated a young hobbyist named John and exploited his genius for their entertainment. Then one day, their hobbyist ran away. Here we have all of the components that you will use within the game. Of course, we have the box that the game came in, uh, which you will be able to set to the side. But as you are playing through the game, it'll tell you to take components and return them back to the box so they are no longer used. So you will want that on hand just to be able to get items out of the way as you are playing through it. Here is our instruction booklet. Once you get going just a little into this game, you will not really need to reference this in any way uh, unless you need hints. Uh, we can, here we go. <clears throat> Once you get here, you can see the spoiler. After this page, you start getting into spoilers. And the way that works is the cards are literally written in here uh, by numbers. Like here, we can see like here is the first item card. It is item 10. So you will have a 10 in here and it'll tell you where you get that card, what it might be used for. Same thing for the rooms, for combinations, all that kind of things. So if you do need a little bit of help, that is in there. Additionally, they have this little... Uh, notes sheet. You can use this. I wouldn't. Uh, and most I would photocopy this so you can write it on. But just any sheet of paper will work. There are things you might want to write down while you're playing. Uh, puzzles you might want to solve and have written down for later use. So having a sheet of paper and a pencil on hand is very useful. Next up, we have the adventure book. This is all of the lore in the book. It'll tell you to look in here to get any kind of information that you need to advance the story, to talk about the rooms, the cards, so forth and so on. It is written very well. Additionally, there is a computer or a, a, a phone app. This phone app is very useful. It has a how-to tutorial uh, based on the three or four person scenario, but really it works for any of them. Um, and then it also has all of the narrative here for the, uh, the, the lore that you're going through written, you know, voiceovered uh, in the app. And the way it'll work is there's a little pad and you will type in the number. So like say if you wanted to know what 10 was, you would type in 10 hit the little go and it would tell you whatever that is. Uh, so, and, and that works really, really well. And it's free, doesn't cost you a thing. So that was really nice. Next we have your uh, wooden meeples. There is one for each character. You will see the characters in the game uh, kind of have a base color around them. So you would go with the blue, associated with blue, so forth and so on. You will notice that each character has kind of a base skill. This is kind of useful, kind of good to know as you're playing the game because there are points where you will get to a point and it'll ask you uh, to send one particular person down this path or, or it might ask you, who do you want to talk to so-and-so? And you have to pick the people that you want to go. So even if you're playing just solo or just two people or just three, you might always want to play uh, all four characters so you have them all so you can send the guys on. And when we get down to the rules, I will talk about that a little more and the different uh, player variances and how to play them and my personal recommendation. Next you have the life counters for each of our characters. There is a expelled side and then of course a whole side. So you will start with one point of health and as you lose health, you will just flip that over to the expelled side. Then there's also a turn order card. There are two of these in this base game. 
nothing on the back. These are good handy. You know, usually you'll have people sitting pr pretty proximity. It would have been nice to have four of them uh, so every person can have their own, but only two is okay. Especially once you get to playing the game, you really don't need that much help. It is a very simple game uh, for the play once you get going. Next, we have our cards. We have our basic standard American size cards and then these larger cards. These larger ones are our room. I'll go ahead and look at a, because this is the one that's going to be flipped over at the very beginning of the game, so seeing this card, even if you're trying to say spoiler free, isn't going to spoil anything. It is the initial card as you're setting up the game, the initial card you will look at, so showing this isn't going to ruin anything. Here we have that initial card, and you can see what's nice is on all the cards, they give that card letter or number in the corner so even when you have it faced up you always know what you're looking for it is a really great system I really like that a whole lot then you will see the different little areas as you're going through the game again they correspond to the adventure book so as you're playing if you say hey I want to examine this great number 401 you will go into the book and you will look up 401 or go into the app and type in 401 hit go and read what it has to say about it it's a really great system one of the other really nice things about this game is within their items it gives a great example here in the rule book, which isn't actually used in the game. So again, we are not spoiling anything. And that is here with the can of cat food, the can opener, and then of course the open can of cat food. Where here they use our introductory room one, and they're saying, hey, let's say we are looking under the bed and there just happens to be a cat under there. You want to coax the cat out. You have a can of cat food and you have the can opener. So what do you want to do? Well, you've decided I want to combine these two items to get the open can of cat food and then maybe to, prog to provide that to the cat. The way you will do that is you will see the number associated with each card. So here, I'm gonna leave this flipped over, but you will see here, this is card 10. Number 10 would be up here in this top corner. Whatever number is the lowest will become the first number in your entry. So here, the can of cat food is card 10, where the can opener is card 15. So in the book, you would look for 1015. It would then go in there and say something like, you use the can of cat, you use the can opener to open up the can of cat food, which gave you the open can of cat food. Then it might say something like, return cards 10 and 15 to the box, get card uh, 12. Or it might say, return card 10, get card 12, which means you get to keep card 15, which means you might be using it later on. Again, it goes back to this whole thing where you really wanna pay attention to what it says you are keeping, what you're putting back in the box, what you are gaining. Then once you have this card 12, you then might say, well, now I want to use card 12 on the cat, which is hidden here under the bed. So then that would be 12 plus 601. So in the entry, you would look up 12601. Or again, in the app, type in that 12601 and it will say, oh, you have given the cat the cat food and coax it under the bed. Behind it, you see something XYZ. Go ahead and grab card ABC from the box. Or it might say something like, the cat didn't want this food and, you know, curled farther back behind the bed or something, you know. And that's just how the story will go. I really like that a whole lot. I also really like the art here within the dungeon. It's very simple, but looks very nice. The game works really well. Again, once you have that, that base understanding of how everything works, what your turns are, it is a really simple, you will progress through this extremely fast. They recommend that this is for ages 12 and up. But with a little bit of help, I have had no problem playing this with my younger children. Next up, we have a whole bunch of these item cards. Again, these will be used throughout the game. We were just talking about those with the can of cat food and the can opener. Those might be things that you 
see within here. You will get these throughout the game, use them, uh, return them, so forth and so on. Uh, these right here are basically your lifeblood uh, within the game. Uh, and you are combining items, you are using them on items, uh, all sorts of things. There are even parts where you might like like keep items on rooms to extend them or add to the rooms. It's a really great system. Next we have the scenario cards. Here again I can go ahead and flip card A1 because this again is for the initial setup of the game so seeing A1 is not going to spoil anything for you. Um, but here this has there, notice there are three of them because there are three chapters. So this is your start of your first chapter. And of course you will read this and the, the book will tell you what to do, where to go on. So it'll say, you know, read, you know, A1. Then it might say read location A, so forth and so on. Once you finish chapter one, then it'll do all the cleanup, tell you what items to get rid of. And then it'll then have you go on and have you read A2. Once you have completed the game, you have all of these E cards. These are our ending cards. There are a total of five of them. Technically, there are, if I remember right, and I don't want to flip them and ruin anything, there are four different endings, and the, or, and the fifth one is a points card, which goes over all of the different points. I'll be honest, when a lot of times when, when I played this and when the family plays, especially playing with our younger kids, we completely ignored the points. We wanted to play through this for the story and we had an absolute blast, a great time. There really is no reason to go through the points. It'll tell you, you know, how how good you've done. You're, you know, so you might, you know, especially if you're playing solo, you might want to jot down your points and really pay attention to that uh, according to how the rules say to, to manage your points. But you don't really need to. The, the reason you might is if you want to do better the next time. Because there will be times in here where you will get into the rules and it will say something like, if you have card XYZ, do this, otherwise do that. Well, you don't have that card. Well, how could I have gotten that card? That adds to that replayability where you might want to then later come back into the game and say, what could I have done differently? What did I miss? What did I forget to do? So I could try to get that card XYZ. So when I get to that section in the game, now I have that. Great. Again, that's how it goes to some of that replayability that they talk about. Overall, I found this to be a great uh, uh, escape room type puzzle type game. Uh, it was complicated enough to keep us playing, but simple enough where it was a great family friendly game. And where it did get complicated, where it does get a little hard to get through, we do have the hits. So nothing is undoable. Uh, you definitely can play through this game no matter what. That again, was a very awesome aspect of the game. So how do you play adventure games, the dungeon? Well, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is decide how many players or how many characters you actually have in the game because that really is the largest difference when it comes to setting everything up. If you are playing with two people, then you will go ahead and give each character six of the health icons. If you're playing with three, you will give each one of them four. If you're playing with all four characters, you will give each person three things of health. If you're playing a solo variety, you need to play with at least two people and you're just playing each person by yourself. That's not a big deal because this game is a very co-op driven game. At any point, you can swap items between characters. You, of course, can talk between characters. So playing solo is, is, is very acceptable. It is you know part of the game to the point where even if you're playing, say, with two people or with three people, I would always use all four characters. You would just have each person use two characters. Or maybe if you're playing with three, have the extra fourth person kind of rotate where every turn a, a different person plays that extra character giving everybody an extra chance to to do something different 
Next we have the rooms and of course the items. That brings us down to the overall play for the game. Within the game, you can move between any location that you have uncovered. So let, here we have A and let's say it has spawned something uh, and let's go ahead and move these two down for now. Let's say we've spawned B because we have managed to break open the door. Uh, and so now we have both of these visible. Since they're both visible, now you can walk between these two rooms as well. Next, you have three different options, three different things that you can do within the game. You can explore one of these room icons. So again, say 401, you decide, hey, I want to look at this grate. Again, you will go into your adventure book, look up item 401 to see what it has to say, or you will go into the app, type in 401 and see what it, ha see what it has to say. Your next option is to combine items and maybe try to see if you get something new or if something happens or you know whatever uh, so your your next possible action is combining and your final one would be to use an item on a location so again like we did when when we talked about combining items where let's just say this was the can of cat food. This was the can opener. You would combine those, look up entry 10, 11. That would maybe get us card 12, which was that open can of cat food. And then so then we would say, you know, on on our turn, we're staying in the room, so we're not moving. We've combined these. And then on our next person's turn, uh, he is taking that can of cat food from you know, the other player and then using that can of cat food. So it'd be 12, 601 on here and the story would continue. That's really everything to this game. Move to a location that you, that you have access to, explore the room, combine items or use an item on a section of a room. Then we're just going through the story. We're seeing where it leads. We're trying to solve the puzzles. We're trying to best connect everything. And we're having a whole lot of fun. It's a very simple game. Very easy to go. Especially once you get a couple of these rounds under your belt. You will you'll definitely be maneuvering through it. Moving around. Uh, we have our meeples again. So if here. And that is just for knowledge. So here. We have the guy here again for that movement. So you say, okay, now I'm gonna go move to A. So you just move your guy there. Super simple, because there are sometimes that it might say for everybody in B. So you do wanna make sure you move your guys around and know where everybody is. So what about the game's table presence? Well, that question is easier said than done or, or easier asked than answered. Here I have a very basic layout. Now this layout does not show up anywhere in the game. There is no spoilers going on here. I just tried to do a very broad, uh, over encompassing layout just so you can get an idea of what some of the max is. Cause I do believe uh, five high or five uh, across is the max that you will get into. But honestly, I can't totally remember. But that is here in an example. And of course, as you are playing, you will do multiple paths where you might go this way and up and over or so forth and so on as you're moving around the game. Like I said, you will never get to this layout, but I wanted to show you an idea. The other thing is, yes, this is a card game, but you are going to want to try to keep your cards on the table as you are playing. Because again, it is that whole total co-op game so you definitely want to see what cards everybody has so while you were looking around the room you know and you're looking at here and you're seeing this 501 you're like oh well wait a minute this guy has a jackhammer which is not in the game no spoilers here well this guy has a jackhammer i want to use that jackhammer here on the wall so i'm going to look up you know, card 20 here, the jackhammer, which again, it is not, <laughs> on 501, 
uh, to, to see what might happen. And of course, if everybody keeps their cards in their hands you can't see, you might not realize that he has that jackhammer that you want to borrow and get so you can do that. So you do want to kind of keep your your cards on the table. The other thing is it'll allow you to see what kind of life everybody has. So when you do go into some of those scenarios where it says send one player down this one path or have this one player talk to someone, you might not want to pick this person who already has one health gone. You might want to pick one of the other ones that is full health just in case. Finally, I did want to give a small little PSA or public service announcement here with the item cards. You will notice that the item cards start at 10. That is not a mistake. You are not missing cards 1 through 9. I have no idea why they started with 10 uh, because the character cards plus the health cards do not equal 9. The ending cards plus the three scenario cards, there's not 9 there. I believe there's 8. So why it starts with 10, I have no idea. But that is correct. You are not missing anything. Well, I had an absolute blast playing this game. It is actually one of my favorite uh, puzzle games or, or escape room type games. It is very lightweight, uh, very easy, very manageable. The price point to this game is absolutely fantastic. I believe it's under $15. Uh, it's got, as the, the box says, uh, decision-making, storytelling, you know, 100% agree with their five star ratings. Then with their three for replayability, yes, once you have the story, it doesn't really change all that much from play to play. But where you do get that replayability in here is, again, as I was talking about, you will get to cards, get to section where it says, if you have card XYZ, do this, otherwise do that. And it'll get you to a point where you want to know, well, how could I have gotten card XYZ? And it actually makes you want to play the game again, want to go through it again. We also saw that there were four different endings. So you might want to see, well, what could I have done differently to get ending two or three or four? So there are reasons to replay. Also, because it is based on that chapter type, once you think you've done everything for chapter one, there's no reason that you necessarily have to replay chapter one. You can kind of then start going into, all right, well here, I just want to replay chapter three. That's you know where some of those things that I may have missed out on, especially as you are playing, you will start to learn things about the game, about the pacing of the game, how things move along. And you will probably find yourself replaying chapter one more than chapter two and definitely more than chapter three because you will definitely get that that sense of pace and realize how many turns you might have or might not have uh so you might spend more time where in the in the beginning you may have gone through quicker so again with that replayability that one leads us to okay when i've gotten it through well now let me go back start chapter three again just redo with that one let me play it through again to see if I can get that different ending. Oh, or, or wait a minute, maybe I do need to go all the way back to chapter two to try to get this one item that may have been gotten over there. However, usually uh, you can continue to get things uh, from past chapters as you're going on. You just have to then get the items uh, as you go through. So it does have some replayability even though it, it, it is that story driven that isn't really going to change all that much. Great game, great lightweight, great puzzle, uh, great escape room type game. This is the first of the two installments for the adventure games. We have this one and Monochrome Inc. and there are more to come. I think the next one is, uh, I had a hard time telling, maybe like a, a a volcano type scenario or a Mars type scenario. Either way, it's out for pre-order now. You better believe I will be picking that one up because I loved this game so much. Well, I hope this review and how to play has helped you to determine if this is the type of game you are interested in. And until next time, guys, I'll see you later.